Hello, I'm Michael Denon, and this is the Physics of X, where X is everything except politics. And what we're focusing on are things from the Dresden series, where Harry Dresden, a wizard in Chicago, really in modern era time, shows us a lot about physics and a lot about issues of faith. And today we're on a science one. We're back to shield and the shield bracelet. So we talked earlier about just some of the general ideas of shields. What I'd like to talk about today is something very interesting that happens to Harry. He has his shield bracelet. It can make a shield. It can protect him basically from thrown objects. We talk about it as protecting him from kinetic energy. That's not really quite good use of physics language. Kinetic energy is not a thing. It's a state of stuff. And so objects that are moving have kinetic energy. And his shield basically protects him from physical objects. Now, in one of the books, Blood Rites, he's using his shield to defend himself and somebody throws fire at him, basically. And the fire and heat get through and burn his hand. And the question is, why does his shield fall, fail in that case, but succeed in these others? And it does get to a couple of interesting, both fundamental physics questions and technological ones, what we like to talk about when we're talking about science. So fundamentally, heat is related to temperature. When there's a temperature difference, you get a flow of heat, an exchange of heat. And temperature is basically just the kinetic energy of molecules. It's how fast they're vibrating. So on the one hand, it's kind of interesting. His shield protects against things being thrown at him, bullets, rocks, whatever, sticks trying to hit him. To say it doesn't protect at heat, again, means that what it's missing is the vibrations of molecules. So it's not a kinetic energy issue because heat is fundamentally kinetic energy. But it is a scale or size issue that the vibrating molecules get through. What might that mean? Well, if his shield is basically just making air denser or thicker and the air molecules reacting to being hit by large things, he's probably not tuning those molecules to respond to individual molecules hitting them, which is what heat is. So as the fast vibrating molecules are hitting the air around him, it's still basically gas. And either those air molecules get through or they vibrate them and the vibrations get through and so hence the heat passes. The other interesting thing is fire, which is attacking him, is actually just a chemical reaction. And again, if you're just using the molecules of air, there's no reason you would stop that chemical reaction from going through. So it's very realistic that Harry would suffer from the heat and fire when he's protecting from other things. I think you just have to be careful about the language you use around it. Now, what's interesting, in a later book, um, Skin Games, another wizard uses techniques to protect herself from heat. So this is a great example of protecting yourself from heat because they talk about a lot of different things. I mentioned heat being transferred just by the vibration of molecules and a temperature difference. That's conduction. Heat often gets transferred through convection, which is actually the motion of the hot molecules from one space to another. And in this segment, you see this wizard doing a lot through both of these, particularly through controlling convection and keeping the hot molecules away from herself. So this is very useful, and again, when we think technologically and we think about designing shielding from ourselves, we realize that we do think of two fundamentally different things when we shield heat versus large objects moving. We already talked about protecting yourself from collisions, crashes. That's the objects moving. If you think about heat shielding, it's often having a layer of vacuum where there's no molecules to actually vibrate, having a material that doesn't conduct energy well because the molecules are pretty trapped and don't vibrate. So you can imagine if what Harry does, which he does later in the book, is not only make a stiff layer to protect against things hitting them, if you redesign that layer to also resist the vibrations, you will get both a heat shield and a you know, particle bullet shield. And that is what he does later. So he redesigns and uses these two different properties to protect himself most fully. So again, we've taken shields to the other level and we've looked at things moving like bullets versus heat. You can do both, but they're different ways of protecting yourself. So hopefully you are able to now use this to design your own shield technology to protect yourself in all sorts of situations. Thank you for listening to The Physics of X. This has been The Physics of X, where X is everything but politics. Make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notifications of every episode coming weekly straight to you.